Okay, my friends, very difficult decision today. This is Roger Mudfossil University. I decided to release information because I can support it 100%. I don't know if it's a good idea to do this or not, but I'm going to do it. This is the Sphinx, I believe, and these are the pyramids at Giza, and this is an ancient map of Babylon. Okay, it shows everything, and these, this is the Giza Plateau, and a plateau is not just piles of dirt, and they are not tree stumps. They are the feet from the giants that died in the Great Flood, standing up with their feet in the mud. That's what's called mud fossilization. And the heavy metals ran to the bottom of their feet. They are underneath these plateaus. The pyramids were built, in my estimation, on top of the veins and arteries to protect the source of the gold. All right, before I get into this, I just want to make, we need to have a public forum, a discussion about what our real past was, because people have no clue whatsoever what our real past was. Now, there is a bunch of us that have really been working at this, and I mean really working hard. I've been working damn hard. I know Michael Tellinger has been working very hard at this, um, and there's a whole batch of other ones. I have a whole crew of people that we work together, and um, Tyson's out on the West Coast, and, and um Greg who does the up and down the East Coast and Scott Wiles is all over the place and we got people everywhere and I, I hate to miss a bunch of other people because there's a ton of them. There's John slutting down in the Amazon. He's got a branch of the Mud Fossil University. There's people all over the world right now because it's everywhere. It was a worldwide flood. It killed the giants, exactly what was recorded in history. Now, what I am recommending and um, also, there's a, a couple of other channels. Um, Woodward TV, very good. He's digging into things that people want to avoid. They don't want to talk about them because they're scared. And that's where I give him a lot of credit. He's a good guy, and he's, he's asking questions, what you need to know about things. You should, Woodward TV, very good guy. Um, and there's all kinds of other channels that are starting to come around to be able to, they're not scared anymore to present this. I mean, I'm telling you something. Your voice trembles a little bit the first time you start to tell people about this because it's just it's insane They literally look at you like you have literally lost your mind and I'm serious And, and I would too if I hadn't already lost my mind <laughs> So we're gonna get into this, but what I what I want to do is if this guy here Femi Krasniki he seems to be very very dedicated to this if he would create some kind of a public forum where we could address these things as a group because Michael's got all kinds of information over there, Michael Tellinger I, Tyson's putting stuff up. Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures on YouTube. Absolutely unbelievable. He's got a site out there. We've been working on it together. You know, he's out there. I'm not, I don't go out there. But, you know, he sends me all the stuff and I watch his videos and we talk a lot. And uh, it's just it's incredible. It's just gigantic, gigantic, gigantic creatures. And their feet were just absolutely enormous. Their feet were enormous and went down in the ground. And what happens is specific gravity. In your blood, there's what they call the transition metals. And they are all of these metals right in here. Gold is in there, silver is in there, platinum's in there, everything. Everything, copper, all, it's all in your blood. That's all your blood. That is the only reason you can live is because of transition metals. They give, they take. I need some zinc here, no problem. Give me a couple of electrons, I'll go the other way. Boop, 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 boop. That's how you work. That's your life. And it settles down, and the heaviest stuff settles down, 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 down. Pip, gold. They just, I, I've been talking about this for years. I mean, it's, it's at the bottom of these feet. They're at the bottom of these feet. I'm sorry. They were all over the earth. You want to go find gold, it's everywhere. That's why it bothers me to go start talking about this, but it's everywhere. Gold is no big deal. It's everywhere. All right, I'm going to really kind of wrap this up quick, So, but I, I'd like to get some responses from people. Now, again, it's Mud Fossil University. This I had, uh, not this one, this one was DNA certified human, and the other one was just blood gushed out of it. But what I want you to look at, this is the red area that is saturated with blood. You see this at the bottom of the lung? You see it over there? Now, this is what they call... Feldspar. You see this stuff? Yes, yeah, so, uh, by um, 
a geologist, he oh, yeah, it's feldspar, it's all over the place. Yes, it is, because it's the coating of, of biology. That is what is like a rubber bag that keeps biology inside the lung, inside the heart, inside the liver, the kidneys. Every, every part of your body is coated with what's called fascia. On the lung, it's a little more dense because it really has to do this all the time, every day, 24 hours a day. The rest of your skin it has the same stuff, but it's not quite so pronounced as this. All right, because this really has to be flexible. Now, there's another lung I had here on my property, and here's that little flap there, just like the other one, the big one, where there's a lot of blood right down here. This thing ran blood all over. This is the blood that came out of it. This is laying on my counter. There's blobs of blood ran out of there. So don't any have anybody tell you that you can't get blood out of a rock. If that's a rock, that's blood, came from that rock, so I say you can get blood out of a rock. And there's the alveoli, the little, you see those? It's the same thing you got here. It's identical. This is what it is. There's no mystery here, none whatsoever. It's being avoided by the top of what we consider the top academic institutions in the world. And uh, it's, uh, I'd say it's disgraceful myself, but w w what we need to do is have a discussion about it. It's not allowed in that arena because they control it and they won't allow it. So if we don't do it, it's not going to get done, my friends. Now, I think I will or I have shown you the big finger that's a 36-inch long fingertip. Just th this part of the finger, 36 inches long, 3 feet. It was DNA certified, no question whatsoever. And I, it's here. Anybody can come and look, and I'll show it to you. And it, it's the fingerprints, the fingernail, everything's there. The lung I just showed you looks like you could transplant the damn thing. And these things are, this was a very sophisticated test. This was all PCR sequenced and all of that business. And um, it was, uh, you know, this is no Mickey Mouse thing. And I was the first to have... DNA from humans, or, uh, well, I was the first one to get DNA tested from these ancient things, I believe. This was uh, 2015. Now, I'm not even going to show the guy's name that did the test, the lab, because they've been getting, yeah, they must be getting intimidated by somebody, because he sent me a thing saying that they were going to take legal action against me if I was kept saying that they said there was giants. I never said they said there was giants. I said I extracted the DNA samples myself, sent them to them, they tested what I sent them, and it came back ex exactly what I just showed you, human mitochondrial DNA. Case closed, no question whatsoever, against a database of every single creature that ever existed. It's called a blast. And they checked it, and these were human. And he said, and I have a recording of talking to him. So it's not like I'm saying something that he didn't say. I, know, I, I sent it to him. I said, here's a recording that we talked about it. So, you know, this is what it is. I'm sorry they're bothering you, but it's not my fault. I paid for the test, and I did it because I wanted to prove it's true. Now, you know, I'm not going to be intimidated. I mean, I don't have anything to lose. Everybody else has something to lose. I don't have anything to lose. I just... I just want it to be known, and I want to talk about it. I want to know what the, our real reality is. Just like the guy that did the, the, the film. That's all I'm interested in. All right, I know it's not the best shot in the world, but that shows you the fingernail right there. This is a fingertip, and I believe we f the, the anatomist ended up thinking it was a left thumb. And that's the back part of the bone. There's a, a bone inside here that just bumps up against the next bone. They're held together by ligaments and tendons and everything held together. And then you've got your blood supply coming in. And then you have fingerprints on the other side. And guess what? They're there. Here's the fingerprints right here. I smashed this off to get the blood out of it. This, is, this was right here. That's, uh, yeah, right there. That was where the finger, fingernail was. Right there, exactly like that. And, and you look at your own finger, and you, you're going to see your fingerprints start right up next to your fingernail. The fingernail was right there. And then it wrapped around, and I broke this off with a sledgehammer, 16-pound sledge if you want the exact details of the uh, event. And uh, then I took this, well, I took a drill and went up inside and got blood from the artery and had it tested 
DNA human. Mitochondrial DNA, and I don't know. And you, it's just out there, just laying around. I got this stuff laying around everywhere. And that's grip skin. That's the thickness of the guy's skin, like on the thickness of your fingerprint. And I'll show you what grip skin looks like. Now, again, this is director Femi Krasniki, and it's the movie Great Pyramid K 2019. And he's given permission for anybody to debate this and show this stuff. Now, here's what I want to show you. You then learn that a block of granite weighs 70 tons, the weight of three loaded tractor-trailer trucks. Then you learn that inside there are 1,500 tons of granite that came from 900 kilometers away. All right, let me just start by saying I don't agree with that. I agree, uh, well, my statement is this stuff was right here on the site, and I can see this changes everything in history right there. This just this picture, this one picture. You say, well, Roger, why do you say that? Because this is faced and it's shaved. This is nothing more than wet flesh that is had, never got shaved down. You see it? They shaved it. They're shaving it down to make it flat, to construct with this. They put them in all different types of ways. You can see exactly what they did down in Peru. And I understand that right there. I understand that. Nobody does. Nobody understands what that is and that is. I do. I understand what all this little stuff is. And we're going to talk about that later. There's no sense in doing it now because it gets pretty deep. But this is the one picture right here that shows when it was made because these were moist at the time it was made. They just cut these and just swished them down. That's my claim. I can't account for it, but at this particular spot, they pile all these stones up, and then when they shave them down is when they get their, their form. You see, these are unshaven. It's unshaven. They're not. They're. They're like it's moving from here out. I don't. I. I can't explain how they did it. Why they did it in this particular manner. But I can see obviously what's going on there. They just piled them up in globs and then they just shaved them down so that they all fit together. And this happened all around the world, everywhere. Petra is nothing more than a pile of wet flesh carved into. You go inside the treasury of Petra. It's just. There's nothing more than like being inside of a piece of meat. Okay, they, they really have no idea about the size of the creatures that were here and about the remnants of the flood and how they used it. But I'm going to show you one last picture and then I'm going to wrap it up for today. And I'm going to hope somebody's going to get a hold of me or somehow this is going to be presented in an open forum discussion. You know, for, we could do this for days online literally and answer questions from anybody about anything i have the chemistry i have all let me just show you one last picture then we're going to close the case on this i say this was wet well moist flesh and it was molded as needed and scraped and scrubbed and just you know almost like cleaned down very simply that's why these drill cores and all these like cylinders they have that they just came out of there they, they have no idea how they made them they were moist they just cut around them and pulled them right out and the same thing with all of the pottery that they made made out of all of these minerals that they say how could they possibly do this well they could only way they could have done it was when it was soft like this they refuse to talk about things like this this is in bolivia Fuerte de San Piata, Bolivia. They were cutting slabs of wet flesh from using a machine that was designed to do this with tractor trailer, I mean with um, tank treads and wheels and it drove up here cutting the slabs and then they moved them to the back and they built walls out of them. And some of them had actually blood coming out of the walls. Tendon wall, blood, where is it? Tendon wall, blood eroding. This is where they put these slabs they cut. And this is one that still had a bunch of blood. This is a bone. And that's the blood coming out of the bone. It's eroding away. This was a real bad section. They use a lot of crap in this one. Look at this one up here. It's a mess. Now, what these walls were used for, I don't know. But I know what they were made out of. And there's going to be things that I, I'm showing that are going to be hard to dispute if they are shown in an open forum. Right now, I'm not allowed to show anything. Literally, and that's a fact. I'm not kidding you. I'm completely cut off for, for 
close to 10 years, I've been showing stuff that should have been gone viral long, long, long ago. I don't know how they have suppressed it. I really don't. But this is the last chance I got, as far as I'm concerned.